In today's episode, I'm checking out some new and cool features for Microsoft Entra ID, and I guarantee one of these is a game changer. Empower users to securely reset Active Directory passwords and update cache credentials anytime, anywhere, while cutting IT service desk calls and ensuring robust security with MFA, trusted networks, and geo-blocking. Hey everyone, Andy here. So nice to see you and a warm welcome to the channel. Something that has been kind of touted for some time is now available in Entra ID, and this is SOA, or Source of Authority. Now, for many people, many customers out there are in hybrid. So you've got Active Directory on premises and you're connected to Entra ID in the cloud. Well, source of authority is going to be, first of all, it's starting with groups and they're promising that it's going to be extended to other types of objects in the future. So groups at the moment, any kind of Active Directory based groups that you bring through to Entra ID, you won't be able to delete them and you won't be able to for example, add members to them. And the reason for that, of course, is because Active Directory has the source of authority. So it's an absolutely critical skill, and I'm gonna show you how to go through it uh, step by step. In addition, we're gonna look at some other new cool features, including features in conditional access, a new authentication feature, again, things that you just simply need to know. Now, I just want to quickly mention that later in the year, I'm going to be speaking at a couple of tech conferences. And as viewers on my channel, I would like to offer you a couple of discount codes. So the first one is Live360 in Orlando, and this is taking place on the 20, uh, sorry, 16 to the 21st of November. Uh, it's sunny Orlando. And if you use this uh, discount code, you can save yourself a packet. In addition, uh, the 1st to the 5th of December, I'm speaking at the European SharePoint Conference in Dublin. Uh, and again, likewise, there is a discount code there just for you. Um, and I would love to come uh, along and uh, meet you there. All right. So I think without any further ado, I think it's about time we jump in and take a look at these awesome features. So kicking off the demo, I'm in Active Directory, currently in hybrid mode, uh, which is currently syncing into Entra ID. And we have a group here, a security group called Marketing. Marketing contains the following users. So we can see that it's represented in Active Directory by just flipping over into the portal here. And if I go into the All Groups node in Entra ID, I've got a group here called Marketing. And if I just scroll along, sure enough, I can see the source of authority for this group is Windows Server Active Directory. So if I click into the Marketing group, and just to demonstrate this, you'll notice that I can't delete the group and I also can't make changes to the group, of course, for example, adding members to the group and so on. And the reason for this, of course, is that the source of authority lies with Active Directory. So your obvious question is, okay, how do we do that? I'm just moving into a slightly bigger screen here. As you can see, Microsoft currently in public preview, they give you the ability now to change the source of authority for groups groups and no doubt other objects will quickly follow eventually. So to show you this, we're going to use both Entra ID and the Graph Explorer. Now you can see with the Graph Explorer, what I've done is I'm currently logged on to my current tenant, which is Contoso. It's just a demo tenant that I'm using. And as you can see, you can change the theme at the moment. It's currently in dark mode, but and like I said, really, really simple to do. So now that I'm logged in as my administrator, what you need to do is you need to grant consent um, to various permissions. So to do this, I'm just gonna simply click into the filter box, click on group. And as you can see, we have a number of different options here. So the one that we're looking for is this one. This is the group on premises sync behavior. So I'm simply gonna click onto this and I'm then going to click on consent. So you can see group on-premises behavior, read and write, and it will just go through a little authentication. Of course, it just explains what it's gonna do. You just simply consent to this, and then you just accept that. 
Um, so once you've done that, next thing that you want to do again, just expand the groups again. And the next one, then there are actually two permissions here that you need to do. So the first one is group read and write. So let's just do that. So I'm clicking on the read permission and just accepting that one. And you can see you get an OAuth permission here. Again, I'm just going to consent and then finally just go in one more time again, just agree to that consent for write. So both read and write. Now, if you don't click this and you get an error that says error 403, it's probably down to those permissions not being entirely correct. So there you go. That's the first thing we need to do then is set up those consent permissions there. And of course, you'll just want to check that this has been done in enter ID. So for this, I'm just going to flip across, go into the enterprise apps blade, and I'm coming into the permissions blade. And sure enough, you can see that I have got the graph explorer uh, already preloaded. And because I've got that connection just down there on the left hand side, if you click into permissions, you can see that indeed there we have the group on premises sync uh, group has actually come through and it's got the appropriate permissions and it's looking pretty good. Next, I'm going into the group account in Enter ID and I'm just selecting the object ID and I'm going to copy this as I'm going to need it for the scripting. Okay, and next what I'm doing is I'm going into the Graph Explorer. You can just browse for this and it's just a website and you log in with your own uh, credentials, Global Admin. I'm going to click on to get and we're not using version one, we're actually using a beta. And from the graph documentation, I'm just going to paste this get command in, although I don't actually need the word get. And the only thing that you need to put in is the group ID of the group that you want to convert. So in this case, you can see this command is just showing me that at the moment I've got a group called marketing. And as you can see, it's uh, it's got a status of false, so it's not cloud native at the moment. This is actually the source of authority is Active Directory. OK, so now the next thing we need to do, of course, is we need to change that. So up here in Graph Explorer, instead of get, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and I'm going to change this to the patch command because this is what we want to do. We want to change it rather than using version one. I'm going into the beta and I'm just basically going into the uh, manual, which is the online manual on learn.microsoft.com. And I'm copying the patch command across here. And what we need to do is, of course, we need to replace the group ID with the group ID of our marketing group. So I'm now going to simply just copy that across. I'm going to paste it into the address bar. The, I'm just going to replace that ID. So again, just going into the object ID of marketing, I'm going to copy that across. I'm going to remove the word ID. I'm going to paste that in. So nice and easy. You can see it says, is it cloud managed underneath? So you need to paste this in as well. And the, the idea is that, yes, it's true. It is cloud managed this time. And it's pretty instant, actually. So what we'll do now is we'll flip back over into Enter ID. And it's just a good idea just to kind of refresh the portal a little bit. Once I've done that, I'm going to head back in. I'm going to go back into the groups. And of course, I'm going to locate our marketing group. Now, of course, it was it started life as a security group. So here is the marketing group. Of course, you can change it. You can uh, upgrade it if you want to uh, for it to become a Microsoft 365 group eventually. But you can see I can now delete the group. And likewise, as before, I can go into the members and I can also uh, add members. So this next feature is kind of cool, actually, although you do need an Azure subscription for it. Um, but conditional access, one thing that kind of I've always been bugged out by is the fact that things like reporting only mode, you had to go into the system, the, the system logs, the sign in logs. Um, so in this example, you can see I've gone ahead, I've created a conditional access policy at the moment. It's running in reporting only mode. Um, so, you know, reporting only mode is really useful if you want to test and trial out a policy. So I can come in traditionally into the sign in logs here 
and you can go into an entry and of course it gives you details about you know the reporting only mode if there is any kind of policy on there it shows you if there are any conditional access policies that are hitting the authentication the device the user information and all of this is really useful but i thought it never really give you a lot of kind of real analytics so now what we have is the ability to go in back in here back into conditional access and in conditional access you have now got this feature insights and reporting so in here you can now see that again once you've got that um, subscription and that storage group set up here you've now got lots of really nice kind of detailed controls see what users what the sign-in risks are and again you can export these as really nice reports okay so next up let's take a quick look at what's new um first of all copilot agents of course have been extended now with the security copilot service now fully available in microsoft entra id particularly nice actually is the agent that deals with conditional access it can give you some kind of cool reporting is it worth the money I'm not convinced uh, at the moment, but you know, time will tell. Let's see what happens. Another little annoyance is the fact that if you go into Enter ID, we had nice roll up menus before. Everything now just seems to be in a single list, which is kind of annoying. One, this one saving grace, of course, is that you can favorite various items, and you've now got this favorites, which is kind of really cool, actually. That's kind of nice. I do like that. Other things that we've got, you've got uh, ID protection of course conditional access is now being referred to as rule-based conditional access again there's it's in here just had a little slight name change there and then the other thing that i wanted to mention if i go into enter id i'm going to come down into authentication and we have authentication methods and it's in here where you can manage all your authentication methods for your users so you've got the full functionality you can manage things like pass keys um, the Microsoft Authenticator app, SMS messages, one-time passcodes, which are always useful. Um, we've got the additional uh, certificate-based authentication, particularly useful if you're deploying devices in Intune. And I'm going to cover this in a future session, actually. Recently reported briefly on this, this is the new QR code uh, authentication mechanism. Really quite useful, really simple to switch on. Just enable it and it's enabled for all users anyway you can go into the configuration area here and you can choose a minimum pin code again I, I, you can imagine if you had a 20 digit pin code that might be quite useful this is okay i feel but it would be nice to see some kind of other maybe mfa feature with this so rather than just something that you have which is a qr code and a pin code something that you know it would be nice to see something physical so maybe this will be a feature in the future let's find out but at the moment if you're in a call center something like that an office where multiple users log on this is where you can issue your own personal QR code to your employees. So this can be on a card, it can be on their, you know, something that they carry around with themselves. And this can be quite useful. A lifetime of the QR code, the default, by the way, is set to 365 days, a year. And for the love of God, definitely not. I would probably change that to something manageable, either 14 to 30 days, which seems fine. So next, of course, I'm going to come into my users and I'm going to find a user that I can assign this to. So I'm going to bring in Alan's account. And here in Alan's account, you've got authentication methods. So in the authentication method here, you can see I can now choose to add an authentication method to Alan's account. So I'm going to say, yeah, let's go ahead Let's choose uh, an authentication method. And in this case, I'm going to choose that QR code. Um, when do I want to activate this? Now, this is kind of cool. So you can, you can see it's picked up that um, expiration. So the 30-day expiration. So you've seen where you can cover that. 
Um, also, when do you want to activate it? So do you want to activate it at a later time? So you can maybe he's just joining a group or joining the organization, or do you want to go ahead and activate that now? You can generate a pin for Alan. Of course, you make sure that he would have that. And again, I'm now going to click on add. And this will now add the QR code to his account. So now the QR code will be generated and you can now get, get that, of course, to Alan. So we can download this QR code, give him the pin information, and he will then be able to authenticate with that through any smartphone, either Android or Apple. So it's kind of nice, actually, and really useful for the likes of call center staff. So next, I want to talk about something that's appeared in devices in the last few months. And in devices, I'm going to go into device settings. Now, you might love this, you might hate it, but I'm not so sure about this one. This is the local administrator settings. Now, if you're familiar with the likes of Intune and using Autopilot, then of course, you know that when you Autopilot PCs to come into your tenant, they can either come in as a user mode or as an admin mode. Again, for security, it just screams security in my ear here for this one. Local administrator role is added to the local admins group during the device enter admin join. Hmm. So you can see that this is on by default. Personally, I would probably switch that off for security reasons. Likewise, registering user is added as a local administrator on the local device. Again, it's on by default. Again, I'm not sure that that's a good idea. You can choose selected users, or you can just say none for that one. So again, this might be quite useful if you're deploying it to admins, but if you're just deploying it to kind of Joe Public, I would just say keep that as none. Again, just my own personal opinions. I'd love to know what you think about that. Again, this is a difficult one, balancing security with convenience. Now, if you've taken a look at the Entra portal anytime recently, you'll notice that the tiles have changed a little bit and it's now a lot clearer than it used to be. And we also have a number of really neat shortcuts uh, directly on the main pages. So that's really nice to see that coming in. Now, if you want to keep up to date with what's new, just scroll right down to the bottom of your page and you'll see the what's new section. Just a couple of things. Security Copilot has been uh, embedded in Microsoft Entra. Remember though that this is a pay-as-you-go service and it's not cheap. So again, be careful before you start using it. And in fact, it's starting to manifest itself in all kinds of areas. Conditional access, there's now an optimization. It's a reporting tool that you may, you may not find useful. Entra permissions management. This is a controversial one. Microsoft purchased this from a third party a few years ago. It really struggled and as such, Microsoft have just gave up on it. There is, to be honest, very good third party stuff out on this that does this, I would say, a lot better than Microsoft ever could. So it's not entirely surprising that this is gone. Keep up to date with the roadmap, of course. Make sure that you're aware of what's coming and what's going out. And also the change announcements, bearing in mind that some of these might be important and may affect your service. So just make sure that you keep up to date with what's new. So there you have it. What's new and cool for Entra ID for August. I really do appreciate you dropping by. If you enjoyed it, give me a big thumbs up. It does help the channel. And just a quick reminder, if you've got questions and comments, as always, get those down below and I'll do my best to answer them for you. Okay. Just a quick, also a quick reminder that if you've not signed up to my Patreon site and you'd like access to full Microsoft courses, then details down below. Okay, that's it for this time. You stay safe. I'll see you soon.